The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. O'Brien. We get the markets picking things off up in positive territory to kick things off. We'll do about our best uh, this hour. And we're going to have our man Jacob Shoup filling in as well this week in this morning slot. We have crude down a buck sixty six right now, trading at eighty three eighty eight. A little bit of a pullback for that crude contract. You jump around to commodities, gold. How about gold? Let's talk a little bit about gold. Gold up eleven dollars, trading at two thousand and nine. And yeah, I do apologize, folks. I thought they had the um, some excellent internet here. That's what they told me on this lovely Airbnb we're staying at. Okay, so you can't hear me. My computer's lagging a bit when we're talking about in terms of data, but we'll jump around. There's your crew contract trading at eighty three eighty seven. And let's jump to notes and bonds. They've been all the focus. And they're going to be all the focus. And we have a little bit of a reverberation in terms of lower price, higher yield. And it's pretty interesting, the range that these are trading in right now. It seems like one day you wake up and the conversation is that rates have peaked out. And the next day you wake up and they've given back everything we've done. We've been talking about this channel line in the tenure for some time now. You're looking at it possibly on my charts right now on tiger tv and in the den and you have the tenure right now trading down about 12 ticks we're trading at 10601 you check out this channel line this is a channel line on a daily basis pretty remarkable you started this thing at almost 117 let's see what that high is i think it might have been 117 on the dot it sure was 117 on the dot so we're trading down a solid 11 points and the point being we are still well within that channel line and we really started talking about this channel line back on october 11th it's going to be November soon, folks, in two days. And what do we do? We trade to the bottom of that line almost perfectly. We've now traded back to the middle of that range. And you still have lower lows and lower highs coming at you on that 10-year. So be careful of everybody talking about rates of peaked because it's more than possible that that is the case. Uh, I got a couple articles pulled up here in terms of talking about the economic slowdown, right? Maybe that's going to do some of the Fed's work for it. But boy, you look at this chart technically, you look at this channel line, and I would keep this channel line on your charts, okay, because it's a nice clear channel line. We're trading right now at 106, and when you get to the upper or lower boundary line of that tenure, that's a nice indication of an area of possibly resistance or support. And if you break through that area, maybe that's going to be your, your test eventually when you break out of this channel line. You break out, you wait for the retest, and maybe that's the area that you really get a pullback in yields. We will see. We jump over to the dollar index this morning as we have a little bit of higher yield, DXY. We got the dollar index backing off a bit. So it is interesting in terms of the relationship that we have going on between yields, notes, the market, and then the dollar index, right? So this morning, we have higher yields and we have dollar weakness. And we have the market positive, not exactly the scenario in terms of how things have been playing out usually, in terms of how everything is related. Usually what happens, right, we've been seeing it, that occasionally we've been getting where you get a yield spike, that causing some distress in the market, rightfully so. But this morning, that's not the case, as we're getting a little bit of risk on back in the market with the S&Ps up by 24. We have yields trading lower in price. And you have the dollar stronger. So we have markets higher, dollar stronger, and yields backing off a bit. Now, we traded down to 41.22 on Friday, folks, okay? I've been talking about this area of confluence for some time, and we're there. So keep this area on your radar. Going to be a very important area to see how we trade at this 41.40. I mean, pretty cool. We were talking about this area back at 4,400, 4,450 about. You trade down there in a straight shot, man. Coming into what? Coming into Fed week. Yeah, Fed week. This week, folks, uh, quite the pullback. You're talking about a 10% pullback in markets, essentially. And you have the S&Ps trading at 41.62. And check out how perfectly this thing traded down to the lower boundary line of that confluence area. That confluence area, folks, 
is basically the 618 and the 382 of two different trends. But check it out. You're right at the 618 of this one-way trip the market took. That acceleration from March 7th, 10th, excuse me, up to the highs of 46.34 made in July, we are right at the 618. Now think about this, right? That was quite a run, man. From 3,800 and change to 4,600 and change. We've given up 62% of that whole move, just like that. Maybe that's the area we find a little bit of support. We will find out. Lots to talk about, folks. Stay tuned. Seems like we got some of those technical issues worked out. We'll be coming right back after the break. Stay tuned, folks. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN Education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Yeah, so we're in the beautiful Smoky Mountains, folks. We'll maybe switch up the views. I'll see we're in this house. Maybe we get a little bit of uh, better connection as we kick things off. But it seems like we got things working out now. Let me get back to my charts. We got the S&Ps. It's going to be an interesting open, man. You talk about a little bit of bounce off of a pullback. And I do love the fact that we are bouncing off that 618, folks. And it's not just the 618, okay? It's not just the area of confluence that we've been talking about from 4140 to 4200. Okay, excuse me. The reason why that area is so important is because this 4200 area had been a ceiling for an extended period of time. I mean, you're talking about an area, you know, call it ice, call it whatever you want. Okay, 4200 on this chart and the S&Ps, if you're looking at my chart right now on Tiger TV, it is a battleground, man. Okay, that battleground first started, and this is a three-year weekly, but let's back it all the way up. Four, I was going to do a five-year. 
That's right, a three-year work. Uh, uh, let's back it up on a monthly and just zoom in on the last five years or so. Uh, it's going to take a second to get the data. The point being, 4,200 on this chart has been an area that at one point was an extreme. Yeah, that's going to be too much action. This 4,200 area was originally the area the market first bounced in when the Fed hiked originally, right? And you're going back now, folks, almost 20 months, okay, to March of 2022. It is about to be November of 2023. That's when the Fed began their hiking cycle. And if you recall, on the on the moment they actually hiked, you got a, a bump in this market from 4,200 all the way to back to about 4,600 before you got that acceleration down to what, 3,600 and change. You got the ultimate acceleration down to 3,500 and change about a year ago. But you can see on this chart, number one, it became an area of resistance back in May when you traded right to 4,202. Just got above that level in August. Again, you touched 4,175 in September. You touched an area of 4,180 in December of last year. You touched an area of 4,208 in the beginning of this year. You touched an area of 4,198 in April, which was your brief pause before you accelerated to the recent highs. <clears throat> so it's not just the 618. Okay, this is an area on the charts, excuse me, that has been a critical area. It correlates to the 618 of the move since March. It correlates to the 382 of the move all the way from 3500 which is the 4200 area, which is where this gray area, I'll zoom in, on the chart came from. That's the 382 and the 618. They converge in an area of confluence. You trade back down there with uh, in an aggressive manner, and now we're there. And we get to see where we go from there. And it's pretty interesting you make it down there on tech earnings. But nonetheless, last week was a tough one, man. Let's jump around to some of those companies from last week. And it wasn't just the tech companies, man. That was one out of three companies reporting their numbers last week. You jump over to Apple shares. They catch a little bit of a lift this morning. Apple up about uh, 30 pennies. So nothing too substantial for Apple shares this morning. You got Microsoft shares. They're trading up $3 right now. That's a 1% pop for Microsoft shares, trading up to 3.33 this morning. You jump over to Amazon shares following their strong earnings Last week, they're catching another bid. Amazon going to be up more than a dollar to one twenty nine this morning. You jump over to Google. Tough go around for Google last week. They're going to catch a lift with the entire market. You know, Microsoft was the Microsoft was probably the most amazing one last week. Now I say that they gave it all up, and I've been an Amazon bill. I got plenty of Amazon in my retirement account, and they put up some strong, strong numbers for earnings in particular. But their forecast was a little bit worrisome in terms of fourth quarter revenue, right? Their revenue range, basically just able to peak out at the estimate. I think it was 160 to 167 billion, something like that. And the estimate was 167. So the estimate was at the very top range of, the, range of their re estimates. Excuse me. The estimate for their revenue was at the top range for their forecast. Okay, so they miss a little bit, but the market loves profits, especially with a company like Amazon. But I talk about that as a perfect segue to our next one which is talking about profits. Profit cuts signal more bad news for the S&P 500 after the October slump. You got Deutsche out there, Deutsche Bank, saying fourth quarter estimates cut more than typical. And then you have Morgan Stanley's Wilson, who we've talked about plenty on this program. He's had a tough year. He was talking about quite a bear market pullback. Didn't play out up to 4,600, but guess what? We just got a 10% pullback, so maybe he was uh, just not a... A little bit off on his timing. But what they're talking about is the outlook. Okay, and that's why I talk about Amazon and the outlook. Microsoft's outlook is strong as can be, man. That revenue on Amazon, not what the market was thinking. But nonetheless, Bloomberg Intelligence shows firms, U.S. firms, are on pace to report a surprise increase in third quarter earnings. Forecasts for fourth future quarters have been marked down as companies warned of tepid demand and an uncertain macroeconomic outlook. Deutsche Bank said analyst estimates for the fourth quarter have been cut by more than typical 1.9% since the start of reporting season. Profit estimates for the next 12 months for the S&P 500, equal weighted index, okay, which weights each company equally rather than by market value, and that takes out the technology behemoth's influence as much, have come down 1.8% since the start of October. And this is the part I wanted to get to. Check out this chart.
So in this chart here, you have in the black the S&P 500 equal weighted index and then you have the blended forward earnings per share. Earnings estimates are dropping for the equal weighted S&P and as you can see they correlate man. You know, it's all about earnings. When you get an earnings drop, that correlates to a market drop, which is pretty interesting in terms of how that correlates. You may say to yourself, "Hey, you know, we're talking about rate hikes, etc. But look at this chart and how blended forward earnings per share versus the S&P 500 equal weighted index. And they are related. And we have a pullback here and you got the pullback going on here. But that could hamper things going forward. And that's why I talked about Amazon. Pessimistic tone on post earnings conference calls is striking said one U.S. equity strategist at RBC. She's the head of U.S. equity strategy, I should say, at RBC Capital Markets. Uh, Lori Calvacina. The magnitude of downward revisions in 2023 and 24 forecast means the season so far hasn't been enough to get the U.S. equity market out of its rec recent malaise, she wrote in a note. Yeah, so keep your eye on these earnings, man. Now, Morgan Stanley's Wilson says among the, yeah, he's been among the most bearish, man. Now, he was, he was the winner in 2000. 2022 when he was calling for bear markets but he called for him this year too and that didn't quite play out the odds of a rally in the fourth quarter were much lower given quote narrowing breath cautious factor leadership falling earnings revisions and fading consumer and business confidence so keep that on your radar man okay where do we go next well let's talk a little bit of mortgages as we come in what do we got what time we got here we're coming into this break all right, we got about 45 seconds. s and is up by about 27 points right now. So when we get back, folks, we're going to talk about mortgages, which is yields, which is important when we talk about the Fed. And then we're going to jump to the Fed. Higher bond yields could end the Fed's historic rate rises. So we'll come back. We'll see the opening bell. We'll talk a little bit about how they're pushing out 8% mortgages. You know how they're doing it, folks? They're saying, hey, we're going to let you refinance for free when they drop. Don't assume they're going to drop. That's the key there. They very well may. They probably will. But make sure you can afford that mortgage, whatever you're signing. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back. We'll talk a little bit of Federal Reserve Chairman Powell. We'll be back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. 
for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, welcome back, folks. Making sure my mic's on. It sure is. Uh, we are live from the Smoky Mountains in Sevierville, Tennessee, right outside of Gatlinburg. We're in the mountains man i'm gonna be jumping around this week we'll see we'll get some mountains in there maybe uh market kicking things off in quite a positive green territory with the s p's up by 30 points as we kick off the trading session you get the nasdaq 100 up about 100 the dow up by 271 this morning and the russell catching a bit how about that russell up by 20 points that's one and a quarter percent we keep our eye on some of the commodities crude trading at 83.87 you're down a buck 67 for that crude contract right now and we gotta jump to gold right you gold bugs folks if you haven't checked out the gold report yet great time to do it my dad tom o'brien he's got new issue that comes out every monday you can check it out right now you can sign up on the front page of tfnn check out that gold report yeah we make it up to 2000 and what 2010 2012 quite the surge higher on friday man to 2019 you talk about some volatility man uh and that gold contract you got silver how about silver up by 80 pennies right is that right that sure is silver up by 80 pennies. You talk about a move, man, to 23.69. Hopefully my card charts are keeping up for my producer in there. Let me check back. I better check back and make sure. Yeah, I appreciate you hanging with me, folks. You got to watch out for those Airbnb reviews. So I'm staying in Airbnb. Beautiful property up here for sure. Uh, staying in a lovely cabin in the mountains. And I did ask them about Internet because I was concerned. And they told me it was excellent. They told me um, it was excellent. Plenty of people do video calls. But guess what? They're in the sales business as well. They're renting out cabins, man. And it is a decent Internet because what happens here is you're in the mountains. And uh, it's not exactly the same as as city internet to put it lightly uh but nonetheless we'll get through it but there's that there's that silver man how about it look at this let me zoom in on this action that's all this morning man yeah look at that thing man silver just from 8 30 in the morning up to 2367 we jump back to that gold contract for a second you got gold uh not quite the same search not sure what's going on with silver but boy you really caught a bid there let's jump over to notes and bonds as we're holding on to a little bit of lower price and higher yield on the 10-year right now. Okay, we jump around to what I was talking about. Let's kick it off with mortgages first. A little bit of... Uh, come on, cooperate. Cooperate. So what this article is talking about is, is that mortgage rates are 8%. And what you have now is you have mortgage lenders talking about that they will offer you the ability to refinance later. Okay? My dad's talked about it, this on his program as well. What's the pitch right now? It's... Marry the house, date the rate, right? As in you're buying a house you love, but you're only dating the rate, and you're going to be able to trade out that rate once interest rates go down. Very possible that's how it plays out. You know what else is possible if that's how you're buying a home? That rates don't go down, and you're not planning to be able to afford that mortgage for an extended period of time. Do not sign a mortgage, folks, that you cannot afford if rates stay where they are for an extended period of time. That's just sound business advice okay now i say that because you're listen they're in the sales business of selling you a mortgage okay so you're going to see this one now you buy now and guess what we're going to give you a refinance free say ah oh, that's, that's not a bad deal because i'm worried about refinancing right what happens if i'm i'm buying when rates peak and meanwhile six or 12 months later rates drop and boom i got to get hit with all these refinance fees just to refinance a mortgage well no your lender saying hey guess what we're going to uh, we're going to pay for that for you well number one there's no guarantee those rates are going to come back down, first of all, okay? Because that is almost implying, it's a great way to do it, to say, 
we all know they're going to come down and we're going to pay for it when they do. Not necessarily the case. Now, here's the last part of this before we get into the Mr. Powell. Usually, you're going to end up paying a higher rate and you're going to pay more costs up front. Nothing's for free, folks, okay? When you buy a free car, you ever, yeah, I'm a free car. When you buy a car, you ever see those auto dealers? Man, auto dealers are some of the best salespeople out there. And what do they give you? Some of the auto dealers around in Florida, man, there used to be a Kia dealer where they were giving away a free vacation. They'd give you a free vacation if you bought a car. And most of the time, I'd watch that ad and I'd say, I don't want a free vacation. I want you to take that cost of that free vacation that you're going to give me out of the cost of the car and how about you just give it to me for cheaper right well that's not the way it works man and in the same case that's the deal going on here okay generally and here's the part i want to get to here buyers get the option to refinance their mortgage later if rates fall without having to pay much of the closing costs okay and you're talking about maybe a few grand maybe three thousand dollars but usually okay These costs are going to be higher, and that's the buyer beware that I just want to get to. What are the downsides? And this is a Wall Street Journal article. Buy now, refinance later mortgages may have higher initial fees or interest rates. Ask the lender how it is able to offer free or reduced financing. You know how it's able to do it, but folks, the only way it's able to do that is they put those costs into the mortgage they're giving you, okay? If you refinance with your current lender, you will still likely pay third-party fees for services such as an appraisal if, if you need one which you don't always need in a refinance okay um, so be wary of those just be wary of them if you're signing a house right now and listen there's nothing wrong with buying a house right now if you can afford the mortgage if you're buying it for a longer term if you're paying rent anyway right all that stuff you're paying a lot of money I know it man 8% it, it is amazing what that does to a mortgage payment but just make sure you can afford it and don't plan on those rates going down or don't plan on being able to refinance in the future because that's not exactly how it plays out all right let's get to the main event man higher bond yields could end the fed's historic rate rises well i don't think we're going to get a rate increase this week because that would shock the market i got my man tommy o'brien staring at me from inside the house we're going to bring him out here before the end of the program our man landon too we'll get them both out here they're happy they're having a good time uh so what this is talking about, of course, is that many people have been saying, and that term can get you in trouble, many people have been saying, but the article speaks for itself, right? Higher bond yields could end the Fed's historic rise. Some economists say the rise in yields term premium, that's why I want to get here, is worth two or three Fed rate hikes. So what Chairman Powell says is the rise in rates has not been a projection of where the Fed will be, okay, which has been happening for some time. The rise in rates, in Chairman Powell's opinion, okay, has been term premium, which is real, okay? Now, let me get his quote here. Fed officials, including Jerome Powell, don't think that is behind the recent market sell-off, talking about their tightening, okay? It doesn't seem to be principally about expectations of us doing more, said Powell, okay? That suggests the increase is being driven primarily by a rise in what is called term premium. That is the extra compensation that investors demand for holding longer dated investments. Powell conceded that higher term premiums could substitute for Fed hikes in short term rates, though he hesitated to say so definitively. The quote. Um, no, that's. And it makes sense, man. You know, you look at everything, you look at the debt of the U.S., the amount of paper they have to push out. You know, when I look at it as a sound business decision in terms of lending the U.S. government money for 10 or 30 years, you're playing with a little bit of fire there in terms of you better deserve some term premium because are we even going to have a government open when the next uh, closure happens, which is only weeks away? Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. We'll talk a little bit of McDonald's when we get back. Stay tuned. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory to kick things off. You talk about an acceleration, man. How about those S and P's up forty one points right now, trading at forty one seventy nine. We're going to jump to McDonald's next. McDonald's not joining in the fund this morning as they give back the gains on their strong numbers for earnings. But the market, boy, we're catching a bid right now. Now for content. Next year, folks, we've been in quite a pullback. That area of confluence, 4,200 to 4,140. We're just coming up to that area. Going to be interesting to see what happens at 4,200. Maybe that's the next area that you catch a bid to that we face a, a potential area of resistance. But we're in the battle zone right now, and especially interesting, we're in that battle zone as we come into a Fed decision uh, almost 48 hours out from right now, right? What are we talking about? Uh, 52 hours and 17 minutes, to be exact, from Chairman Powell's announcement. And uh, 30 minutes after that, we get a press conference. NASDAQ 100, you're up by 1.2% this morning. You got the S&P. He's up by almost a percent. You have the Dow right now up by about 8 tenths percent. And the Russell up by 1.25%. You talk about an acceleration. Now, let's jump over to McDonald's this morning. Trying to keep up. Come on. Let's go to this job to talk about some of their numbers here. So McDonald's, the chart could load for me here. Come on, mister. Yeah, I apologize, folks. 
a little bit tough on the connection for everything going on. But McDonald's is basically flat this morning. They were higher. And getting into their numbers, man, check out these numbers. Talk about some tough standards. Tops estimates with help from pricier burgers. Okay, comp sales, which track restaurants open for at least 13 months, rose 8.8% in the period. The market was only looking for 7.8%. The earnings, 319 a share. That beat estimates. Higher prices resulted in bigger check sizes. Yeah, they expanded delivery and digital channels, better run restaurants. I mean, they had some strong numbers, man. Sales increased at their slowest rate so far this year, though, with executives warning in July that the overall price pace of growth would moderate as high inflation and interest rates take their toll on the economy. Comp sales in international markets where the economy, where the company directly owns the restaurants up 8.3%, just missing the mark. Licensed foreign markets also expanded at a slower clip than the same period last year. Restructuring costs hurt earnings by two cents a share, 26 million bucks. And you get back to McDonald's shares. And there you go. You talk about a give back, right? McDonald's, we spiked to 263.70, and you give it all back on the open, man. Nothing happened on that conference call. That was just supply meeting demand on the open, and McDonald's gives it back on the open. I mean, think about that, right? You're growing comp sales at almost 9% at McDonald's, and the market says, yeah, what have you done for me lately, man? And you give it all up back. Let's jump around to some of these fang stocks. As we kick it off this morning, Microsoft, how about it, man? Up by 1.9%. There's a lift for you. Amazon shares up by 2.3% right now. The big dog, Apple, as the NASDAQ catches a bid. Look at this bid, man. They're buying everything. Apple up by 1.6% this morning. Even Google's catching a bid up by 1.8%. We jump over to Tesla shares. They're in the positive. Tesla, not as much as some of the other Magnificent 7, but still up by 1.2%, man. We jump over to NVIDIA shares. This market's on fire right now, man. Yeah, NVIDIA shares trading up by, what, almost $10, $9, up by 2.2%. Boy, you look at all those equities, and you got the NASDAQ 100 right now up by 1.2%, but you could make the case that it could be up even more with the way that this market is moving. Let's check on our commodities and what we got going. Gold contracts still trading at about 2007. And we jump to notes and bonds right now, down about 12 ticks, pretty much where we kicked off the program for the 10-year, the 30-year right now, down about 14 ticks, trading at 109.02. All right, what else we got pulled up here? Yeah, we talked about mortgages. Let's see. Oh, this is an interesting one. Yeah. So having just flown to Europe myself for a wedding, I flew to Spain, Mallorca, flew through Zurich, Switzerland. I was flying Swiss Air owned by Lufthansa. And I noticed this section. So the article here is that flyers can't get enough of the upper middle class section of the plane. Premium economy seats are one notch below business class and one above the best parts of coach. Now, what's so interesting here is that if you've never flown internationally, folks, business class is in a class of its own, and it's also in a class of its own when it comes to the cost. Now, I think I paid about $1,000 per flight to fly over to Europe. Not that bad when you think about it. Paying 1000 bucks to fly over to my America. We connected through Zurich. We had about a nine to 10 hour flight on the first leg, and then it was a, a, an hour and a half puddle jump on the second leg to go from Zurich over to Mallorca. But I noticed these seats, and the kicker was is that I said to them, and they're they're you know you pay for the economy, you're paying a thousand bucks. You pay for business class, you might be paying eight or nine grand for that business class seat. Okay, and it's a different world. You got your own little space there for sure. If you can afford it, why the heck not? Okay, but then I did notice the upper middle class in terms of you're talking about premium economy, and it was interesting because I haven't flown internationally in a while. And they started these 10 years ago. That's where it goes. Let's see where they talk about it. They talk about Lufthansa in particular. Here it is. German carrier Lufthansa, which introduced premium economy nearly a decade ago, now has 52 premium economy seats on its Airbus A380-800 wide-body airlines. That might have been the plane that I was flying. 
Qantas plans to add 40 seat premium economy cabins to its A350s arriving in 2026. So they're trying to find that happy medium to charge you more money, right? Which is interesting. With ever more sections and options on planes, travelers say it can be hard to figure out whether upgrading is worth it. One way, dividing the cost to the upgrade by the number of hours in the flight. Listen, if you can afford it, you can afford it, okay? But the way I was doing things in my own head, man, you know, that's a lot of money for a few hours of flight time. And, uh, but it was interesting to see like this, an upgrade from the economy to premium select cost $800 in the days before her for flight. But when she checked in at the airport, she had an upgrade offer of $375, $29 for an hour of flying. Yeah, because it's a 12-hour flight. Right? So you put it that way, I just being myself, being on one of these planes recently, it did strike me as interesting that they had, and it's not as noticeable the difference. You get in a premium economy seat with a little bit more leg room, a little bit more width. Uh, they were sher- serving cocktails and something when you got on the plane to these people. Well, we were sitting there in coach waiting to, for the plane to begin. The distance between seats, premium plus, is between 38 and 40 inches long. Guess what you get in the main cabin? 31 inches. Percentage-wise, man, what are you talking about? Almost a 33% increase in the amount of distance between seats, and that's what matters, man. You don't want to get slammed in there like sardines. Uh, Nonetheless, that's where it's going, man. And those airlines are trying to get every penny out of everybody they can. But I was just living it, and it was interesting to see that happen. All right. How about these markets, folks? We are up at 41.82 right now, and that is the area that we chopped around at from about Wednesday night to where this market accelerated on Friday morning. Maybe 4,200 is the area we're coming to next. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be coming back to finish up the, the show. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. 
tfnn.com educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by 43 points right now, trading at 41.80, well off of the lows of Friday. Remember, we were trading at 41.22, so you're talking about 60 points off of that flash low we got on Friday. We got more earnings coming out this week. We check back in on McDonald's real quick as they give up the gains they had coming into the open. McDonald's shares right now, yeah, basically flat. We're up by 65 pennies right now at 256. Some great comments in the den. I appreciate it as we were talking about the airfare, and it is. Business class equals your company's paying for it. I agree, because those costs, and our man Dan in the den saying he was flying you know, to Japan 20 years ago paying $5,000 a flight, but guess what? You're working during that time. Um, anytime you're, you know, you get a third-party payer, right? My dad talks about it all the time, a third-party payer. Well, guess why they can charge eight to $10,000 a flight, folks? Because they got third-party payers, because your business is paying for that. And part of the job there is that if they're shipping you all over the world as part of your business and you've reached executive status, whatever it is, right, well, they're making that a little bit more enjoyable for you by putting you in business class and maybe you're working while you're there. It warrants some of the price, et cetera. Uh, and so they're trying to add a little bit of happy medium, right, getting something out of the people that maybe don't have a third-party payer business that don't want to be jammed into a seat where you only got 31 inches of legroom. Nonetheless. All right. And what else do we jump to? GM, they reach a tentative deal with the United Auto Workers to end the six-week strike. So last week it was Ford. This week it's GM. Where is Stellantis? But you're talking about a 25% hourly raise plus cost of living allowances over the more than four-year contract. 25% hourly raise over a four-year contract, folks, is what? Five what is it? Five, six, six point two five percent. Is that right, sister? Yeah, six point two five percent is the raise there on a yearly basis plus some cost of living allowances. So everybody sees the twenty five percent raise number, but guess what? They got some catch up to go, right? Because of inflation recently, and then they got to make the cut in the future. So don't get caught up in those headline numbers, man. These are fair numbers for those workers, in my opinion. Uh, and it looks like they're getting a deal done. And we jump over to GM, and they are lower, off by four tenths percent. Four shares right now, lower as well. Market higher. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow live from the Great Smoky Mountain. Stay tuned, folks. Have a great Monday.